let's take a look at how simple it is to set up Veeam CDP inside of Veeam Backup and Replication. So I've logged into my Backup and Replication console, and the first thing we're going to do is install the IO filters on our vSphere hosts. Now, I've been using CDP for a while, so I have everything set up, but I'll show you how we would do it. Um, there's a couple different ways we can access this information. So I can come to the vCenter level right here and say Manage IO Filters. And this is really useful if I had multiple clusters I was dealing with, I could handle all the IO filter operations from one screen. So we can see all the IO filters in the vCenter from this view. Alternatively, the most simple way to install the IO filter on a cluster is just come here, right click, and this would say install IO filter instead of uninstall, and it would run you through a very simple wizard to deploy the filter on the vSphere host, and we're done with that step. The next thing we would need to do is set up a Veeam CDP proxy. Remember, we want to have proxies in our source and destination, ideally located on the same vSphere host as the VMs we're protecting. So let me just edit my proxy real quick and show you what the wizard looks like. If I was saying add, I would literally come through all of the same steps here. So we select the server that we want our proxy to be on. We would select the directory for our cache. And again, this is really simple and it's gonna tell you some of the best practices and recommendations as you go through the wizard. We'll leave that there. If we wanted to enable any of these traffic rules, we could do that here. We would just need to simply review what we were configuring. Now, remember, this is a proxy I already have configured, so we're good to go. Uh, I would click Apply and click Finish, and that is it. We're ready to go with our proxies. The last step is to create our CDP protection policy. So if you've ever created a job in Veeam backup and replication before, this is really no different. We're just going to say New CDP Policy. We're gonna call it demo. And we have a couple options here, right? If we wanted to do replica seeding, network remapping, re-IPing, we're not gonna worry about any of that stuff. The next step is to just select the VMs we need to protect. So we're just gonna pick one right here. Then we choose the destination. Again, this is a lot like a regular Veeam replica. So no major differences if you've ever created a regular Veeam replication job. We set our destination. That all looks good. Policy settings, we're going to just let everything decide automatically. CDP does they have the intelligence to select the best proxies for you, which is really handy. We're going to give this another suffix. We set our schedule, so these are really our RPOs, so short-term retention. Remember, when we select our short-term retention point, we're going to store all that data. So if we say we have a four-hour short-term retention point and RPO of 16 seconds, we need to be able to hold all of that data in the destination. That's important when you're sizing. And then again, the long-term retention, we're gonna keep those longer-term restore points, in this case, every eight hours and for seven days. So the only gotcha here is you need to make sure that you have enough storage to account for all of that. If we want to enable application aware processing, we're going to click apply and click finish and we're going to enable the policy when we click finish. As you can see, the status says initial sync. So it's just basically going to replicate all of your data initially. And once that initial sync finishes, then backup and replication will start protecting it on the RPO that we configured when we set up the policy. And that's it, that's all there is to it to configuring Veeam CDP and backup and replication.